Oh, another thing that's also interesting is, is the fact that you've, you've done a lot over the years. I'm going to talk about music uh, from the movie Passy Days, uh, even through your activism over the years and the influence you've had in, in society. But it seems to some people, uh, when, when they think of St. Michael, Michael Zulu, yeah. they'll probably think of marijuana or marijuana think of, of the, of the herb. Yeah. Have you gotten used to that perception from people? Yeah, I mean, I'm Rasta and herb is nothing new to a Rasta man. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, it's just what it is, mm -hmm. you know. And the fact that, you know, I've been in the open advocating for legalization mm -hmm. of herb, you know, so most people have gotten used to it. Mm -hmm. Believe me, when I was uh, incarcerated for herb, uh, when I went into Kamwala Remand, uh, the, there was this jubilation kind of, and, mm -hmm. you know, the welcome was a spliff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's mean, like you're in it for that, but then still yeah, the celebration. I is mean, ob ob obviously it's illegal in the country, but uh, you know you can't separate Rasta from herb. Mm. Yeah. But what was that experience like, also for you? Because I mean, I mean, to the public it might have been one thing, but to your family it was probably another thing, and then for you who was inside there it was probably another thing. But what was that whole experience like for you? both in and out? For me, I was more worried about my family mm -hmm. because they were devastated, really, and, you know. But uh, on my own, I was excited because uh, it was an opportunity for me to be in prison and, you know, look at life in prison, mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of people think, you know, prison uh, must be a place where you condemn somebody you know, where you punish somebody. But, uh, you know, prison is where you learn, mm. you know. Uh, incarceration teaches you a lot. Everybody that has been to prison, you know, uh, when they are out in society, they view things a whole lot differently mm -hmm. because you've had that hands-on experience. Then, obviously, for my fans, you know, I wasn't so worried because uh, my fans knew me uh, way before. I started music in the open, so, and you know, they've seen me grow. Uh, a lot of people have seen me grow. They've seen me develop into what I am. Mm. And so it wasn't really a surprise for them because first of all, even the arrest itself, it was, it was not uh, what you would call a fair arrest. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it was just to intimidate me. You know, you don't go to, to, to raid somebody's privacy. Mm. Yeah, if we open all these roofs in the city, you know, today, mm. people do a lot of weird things. Yeah, and true. And, you know, when they know that uh, this Rastaman, you know, uses herb, you know, it will always be, they'll always use it as, you know, an entry point. Mm. Because obviously being illegal and, you know, uh, the system will always use that mm. to get to you. Mm. Yeah. How do you feel about, because I know government has been reviewing the whole issue around the cultivation of, of marijuana for medicinal yeah. purposes. Uh, how, how does this make you feel? Is this uh, something that you're excited about? Well, I wouldn't say excited, mm. uh, but uh, maybe consciously excited. Mm. Because obviously we've been excited about so many things before. Yeah as citizens, mm -hmm. you know, we've been excited that, oh, Zambia has one of the largest reserves of copper mm. on earth. Mm. We've been excited that we have uh, some of the best rosewood, mm. the mukula. We've been excited that, you know, there's gold. But all this is just excitement that is reserved for a clique of people, mm. you know, a select clique of people. So. For citizens really to benefit even from the marijuana cultivation, there has to be uh, that will from the authorities to say we have to empower these people, mm -hmm. especially those peasant farmers, you know, that have been incarcerated for years. You know, it's a pity that, you know, adults, it's a shame actually mm -hmm. that an adult can be sent to prison, you know, for using a plant. Mm -hmm. That's just silly. I mean... I, and I say to all countries that have marijuana illegal, that is silly, really. Mm. It's, uh, it's one of those uh, colonial laws, I think. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Pretty interesting. Well, speaking of mis misconceptions and people having, you know, the whole idea of, of people who have, who have dreadlocks, the Rasta culture, what would you say are some of the common misconceptions around people with, with dreadlocks? Well, first of all, I think everyone with dreadlocks smokes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And yeah. sometimes they think everyone uh, with dreadlocks is Rasta. Mm, you mm, know? Mm. Yeah. Right now, we have to separate a lot of uh, Rasta from dreadlocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people are just dreadlocks. They okay, so what's, what's the difference for those who do not know? How, uh, what, how do we tell the difference? Well, Rasta is uh, more than just dreadlocks. It's a whole liberty. When mm -hmm. you decide to be Rasta, first of all, you accept that His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie of Ethiopia, is the second coming of Christ. Mm, you know, mm. I know it's going to be controversial being a Sunday. Yeah with, yeah. So, yeah. with so many people, you know, coming from church. Yes. <laughs> you and know. then hearing that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, that is the fact. So it's like because, a religion of its own. Yes. It's, it's actually more than a religion. Religion is a very minute part in Rasta. Religion actually, you know, for Africans, religion is what has enslaved us. You know, without religion, believe me, Africans would be a whole lot better, would be a whole lot developed. But that religion thing, you know, has caused a lot of people to die because they think if you don't take your AR 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 ARVs mm. and you simply kneel, kneel down and pray to Jesus, mm. you will heal. Mm. You know, it's, it's not it. Yeah. You know, we, we, we failed to pray Corona out. You know, Still here. It has to be science. So religion, uh, with all due respect, you know, I have nothing against religion. But uh, for me, religion is a very minute part of life. I would rather be spiritual than religious. Mm. Yeah, because spirituality, you know, reveals you to yourself. And, you know, if there is a God out there, it reveals you to that God. Ah, right. yeah. Interesting. And I saw you recently posted about uh, quite a touchy subject for, for some people. Those who are being told to cut off their dreads or do whatever before they get their national registration yeah. card. Uh, tell us more about this. I, I think there's been a misconception by the authorities, especially those that are handling the NRCs and passports and things like that, because uh, a lot of people have been... Uh, given a hard time to get their IDs, their NRCs, just because they have dreadlocks, you know. When I open my inbox, you know, every time, you know, there's someone complaining, you know. When I was ZAM president, I actually, uh, ZAM for Zambia Association of Musicians, mm -hmm. not manufacturers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most of that four years, you know, we spent, you know, writing letters to the NRC office. You know, just to say that person, you know, is an artist, you know, or for whatever reason, or is Rasta, you know. So please give them an NRC, which mm. I found quite, you know, ambiguous because it shouldn't be like that. Mm. This is my natural hair. Mm. And, you know, this is me. Mm. So, and, you know, there's this argument to say uh, when you have dreadlocks, you commit a crime then you cut them off, they're not gonna know who committed the crime. All that is silly, you know, because, I mean, the world has moved on. Mm -hmm. We are now in the era of biometrics, you know, where you just look into some camera and your eyes can, you know. So for me, that is a, there is, first of all, there is no law in our constitution that bars you or me from getting your NRC if you have dreadlocks. There is no law. And the fact that most people do not understand the law, do not understand their rights, that is why, you know, they find problems. And some officers, unfortunately, they take advantage of that, you know, and intimidate you when you go there. You know, kachose mm. ivo. You know, kachose nivo, then mukabwele. You know, it's a colonial. I mean, it's, uh, it's, that is slavery. That's mental slavery. Mm. We are Africans. Mm. And... If at all there was a hairstyle that should identify you as an African, it must be dreadlocks. Mm. Yes. 
Okay. I, I know others would want to debate <laughs> on that. Uh, but while you think about it, we are still joined by St. Michael. And when we get back, we get candid. Stick around. Good morning, afternoon, evening, Idion Sena Kumazulu. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Drifter Trek, and you're now watching On the Table with Chiweka on Diamond TV. Voila! Welcome back to On the Table. We're still joined by artist and activist St. Michael. Um, over, over the years, I mean, last year in November, you celebrated um, 28 years? Yeah. 28 20, years, 28 with, years with, with, uh, uh, with Sister D. Yeah. For uh, a lot of us who are, who are yet to reach that point <laughs> in marriage, what would you say are some of the secrets? And in age. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and in age. What, what would you say are some of the things to put into consideration, especially for people in the public eye? It's crazy, you know, because in the 28 years that I've been with uh, this woman, I still don't qualify, you know, to be a counselor, mm. to give advice, relationship advice. Really? Why do you say so? Because every relationship, Chumweka, is unique, mm. you know? Every, it's like a, a DNA pattern. It's mm -hmm. like your fingerprints. Mm. There is no re two relationships that are ever similar. Mm -hmm. Then you would, be, you would be joking. Yeah, because you have your own relationship. I have mine. The problems in my relationship are unique, you know? So I cannot, uh, it's like advising a fish on how to climb a tree mm. yeah it's so for me i i tend to keep my relationship first of all very very private and personal mm -hmm. yeah if i have problems it's probably the people in my in my family or you know my inner circle, my inner circle. Mm -hmm. yeah that will have an idea mm. otherwise it's not, my relationships are not for public consumption. They, so, I mean, you can come out in the open to say, yeah, this is my wife. Yes, yes. Like, but where issues are concerned, advice and things like that, ah, those are unique. So, so have you, have you been a Bashivu Kombe for somebody? No, never. Would I, you <laughs> ever consider if somebody approached you and wanted you to be? Then I'll, I'll, I'll be pretending to be one. <laughs> 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 but it's interesting you talk about how obviously there's no one size that fits all. Yeah. But what type of man or person to be with did you envision your daughter being with, Muiza Zulu? Well, first of all, you know, I believe even within a family setup, the way I have raised my daughter is that is in such a way that I give her the liberty to be her own person. Mm. So if she decides, you know, to, to get into a relationship, the best thing I can do is to support her, mm. you know, because it's not me. Yeah. And, and that is the problem most parents have. They have a certain kind of expectation from their children, mm. you know, and they get so disappointed when, you know, there's teenage, pre uh, teenage pregnancies, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, uh, the young girl goes out with somebody, you know. So there's all these unexpected issues. So as a parent, first of all, start when, when your child is born, first of all, mm. you must understand that this is a unique human being. Your only duty is to bring them up, raise mm. them, give them the support, but never control their thinking, mm. never control their emotions. Mm. You know, ne never control their desires. Mm. Yeah, so that's how I've raised my daughter. So she makes her own choices. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at, at what point, because you know some people think you, you found out about her current relationship yeah. uh, uh, through social media. <laughs> but how did you actually find out about her being in a relationship? She's, she's the person I raised, mm. like, you know, ev every other day. So... I know her thinking. Yeah. I know when she, she's up to something. Yeah. So I knew way before she even had an, an idea that I knew. Really? Yeah. So I kept it to myself. Like, was it, was it like some, the way she was carrying herself? What was it? Yeah, I mean, you know, when we have a special relationship uh -huh. with her. So there is uh, this intuition, you know, which tells you that 
Mm. There's something. <laughs> 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 There's something. So, you know, yeah. sometimes, you know, you, you just... So you waited for her to tell you? Yes, first. I knew she was going to tell me uh -huh. when she felt comfortable. Okay. Yeah, and when she told me, uh, I told her I, I know. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was also that photo that, that, that went viral, and you, you commented on it, and people were sending you photos about it. Uh, what was running through your mind when people were sending you those, the, the same photo? Well. And tagging you in it and saying, look at your daughter here. Yeah, I think most people don't know the, the relationship I have with uh, uh, members of my family. Mm. Yeah, um, I'm very firm, but I'm very open, you know, I'm very carefree, you know. So when a, a few people sent me that picture to say, look, what is happening mm. and things like that, you know, they were very shocked at my response mm. because, I mean, obviously, you, you don't expect me to date her. She's an adult now. Mm. She's over 18 and, you know, so, and the fact that, you know, most people had gotten used seeing her like on my side exactly yeah i think she i would come with her to some of these studios yes. around here mm -hmm. when she was a two yes. you know on live tv she mm -hmm. would be you know chatting with the presenter because that is how you know i've, I've raised her mm -hmm. you know so it's a unique kind of relationship which most people don't understand mm -hmm. and you know when they bring out try to bring out certain things about her mm -hmm. you know they get so shocked to yes. say you know I, I i i i don't give a bother yeah <laughs> true yeah i mean you and i have also built uh, a relationship of, of our own yeah um i mean in a random situation where maybe perhaps i'm the one who is dating her yeah uh, <laughs> and and the relationship came to an end yeah do you think it would also affect our relationship not at all because we just to show up for our interviews <laughs> yeah i mean I I, I I i was showing up for your interviews even yeah. when i knew that you guys were dating yeah yeah and you probably didn't know but uh, i could see that maybe you may have been a bit uncomfortable at certain times yeah yeah but uh, uh work is work for me yeah yeah i mean the only person i can't do business with is somebody who kills my family or who shoots somebody in my family. Yeah. Otherwise, your relationship is yours. Mm. It's, uh, you know, I'm an outsider. Mm. And the relationship I have with you, you know, can never change because you, you are not dating my daughter anymore. Mm, mm. No, no. Because I'm always receiving threats about this uh, in, <laughs> case of, in case of anything. But... I, and that's another thing that people do not know about you, that you are, you're not the traditional or typical dad who would who, who, who try to, you know, I don't know if it's trying to intimidate nah. who your daughter is, is dating. But sometimes people wonder why they expect that from a Zambian father, especially. Yeah, you know, I, I probably, I'm, I'm a bit different. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not so much into the traditional kind of, uh, uh, chaperoning of yeah. relationship especially mm. for 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 your children yeah yeah because you don't want your 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 own child to hate you because you are hindering you know their their feelings mm. yeah i mean emotions are something unique something mm. you know you need to respect mm. you know so i i i, I respect uh, my children's emotion em emotions and you know and it's very difficult for me when my family asks me to go and represent, to be the speaker at some marriage thing. <laughs> ah, <laughs> there, you know, I feel so uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, I feel so uncomfortable I, I, because I, I can't even, I, can't, I, I, I don't even want to, to be part of dowry mm. discussions, you mm. know, things like that, you know. Let people decide what they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, myself, I went to Civic Center on a Monday. I married on a Monday mm. because I didn't want anything to do with weddings. I didn't want, you know, my affair to be public. Mm -hmm. You know, I was top artist those days. Yes. People never knew mm. that he just got married. 
did it very you know, secretly. I had, I had two witnesses there. Yeah. Yeah, and that was enough. So four people were enough. Who were your witnesses, by the way? My mother and my wife's mother. Ah, okay. Yeah. Right, nice. 